Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here here, back at it again with another video. Today, we are doing the long-awaited and missed unboxing video. And we are unboxing the GoPro Hero 7 Silver with an accessory. So if you guys don't know, the GoPro line has many low-end models and high-end models that you can choose from. And specifically for the Series 7, which is the 7th generation GoPro, you can buy three different types of GoPros. You can buy the white, which is the cheapest, the silver, which is the mid-tier, and the black, which is the most expensive you can get for the Series 7. I decided to go with the mid-tier Hero 7 Silver because I didn't really feel like the features that the black had and the silver didn't were justified by the price difference. So I think that this was the best one. There were only some minor differences. This GoPro was picked up at Target for $199. And I feel like that's a pretty good deal for what you're getting. So let's unbox it today. Also, I forgot to mention, I also got this handler grip for the GoPro. Let's focus up on that. Okay, so there's a lot of glare from my lights, but pretty much it's a floaty grip that you can just attach the GoPro using GoPro 2 using a mount. And it's kind of like a monopod tripod, like kind of vlogging stick. But if you drop it in water, it will just float up to the surface so you can't lose it. Okay, so if you guys are hyped for this unboxing setup and review, make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe to this channel, and also hit that little bell after you subscribe to turn on notifications so you don't miss another video from me. This video is go literally going to be posted on the last day of school for some of you people. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this as a graduation present. Now for the GoPro Hero 7 to record data, you will need a micro SD card, which I have here. It's in a just regular SD card adapter. Let me give you a close up for this. So as you can see, this is a Samsung SD card and in it here is a micro SD card, which is what actually goes inside of the GoPro because it's a very tiny camera. So in order for the GoPro to work, you actually have to format this in a specific way. And I personally use my Mac to format this, but you can also use a GoPro to format it. But I just thought it would be faster for this video if I used a Mac. So don't worry, I won't skip the formatting step. Before I put the SD card in the camera and show you what the camera can do, I'll also show you how to format the SD card so you can get it working for your GoPro in no time. All right, so looking at the box of the GoPro, you can see a lot of the features it has. I'm gonna give you a close up of this, guys. Or actually, let's do this. So as you can see, the GoPro is displayed here in its little grip with amount. The packaging advertises a 10 megapixel camera, 4K resolution at 30 frames per second, and it's also waterproof until 33 feet. On the back, it actually showcases a GoPro app that you can download on your iPhone, and I'm pretty sure on the Google Play Store too. So I'm gonna also show you guys what the capabilities of this app are. And on the side here, you just have the full array of all of the features. So once again, 10 megapixel camera, 4K at 30 frames per second, or 1080 at 60 frames per second. It has voice commands, which is what we're gonna try. Once again, water resistant to 33 feet. It has touch screen. But the interesting thing is, is that there are no buttons but the touch screen other than like the power button. But everything is controlled on the touch screen. Uh, slow motion at two times. You have WDR, which pretty much just improves exposure. It's like automatic exposure. And you have GPS enabled, which I thought was pretty cool because like not many cameras have a GPS on them. So now that we went through what the GoPro entails, we just looked around the box. We're gonna open it. So there's actually a flap on the bottom and what you need to open it is you just pull it off. Now the GoPro, as you can see, it will open from the bottom. I'm pretty sure this is gonna bring down the whole entire, yeah, there you go. On the back is a little decal for the GoPro, and it also features the instructions to take it off. So we're gonna do that. So first step, it says to lift up this plastic tab right there. Next, you wanna squeeze these two little prongs, and you wanna slide it right off, tight fit. Oh no, it fell, oh my. So we're gonna set the GoPro aside and check this out later. I'm gonna show you guys how to take off the, 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 the shell on it and everything. So in order to open this box, oh my God, this happened again. So first off, you have the instructions for the GoPro. This might come in handy. You know, I usually don't need instructions. From what I've seen, this GoPro is sometimes really hard to figure out. Have any questions card? Some GoPro stickers, like the Apple stickers, pretty cool. And you have your GoPro important product plus safety instructions. And that's not in the box. In the box, you also have the rest of your accessories. So let's start with the top compartment. You have, oh cool. 
So you have your standard USB-C charging cable, which is really cool. That's what you plug into a computer. USB to USB-C. USB-C plugs into the, the camera, and then the USB plugs into a computer of your choice. And you have two mounts. The GoPro actually comes with two different mounts. One is actually an oval base. This one also has an oval base, but it actually has these little corners on it, making it square. So I think the reason for that is because this, as you can see on the bottom, they're adhesive, they're adhesive tabs. You can stick them onto things. This one is curved, so I'm guessing you stick this one on a helmet, and this one's flat, so I guess you can stick this on whatever's flat. That makes sense. So now we have the GoPro. Wow, it's actually heavier than I thought. Okay, that's really weird. I feel. See, I'm gonna hold this and then I'm gonna hold my G7X. I'm gonna be like, wow, the G7X is really heavy because this is actually really light compared to it. So now the next step for setting it up, you wanna just remove everything around it, which includes the case and everything. So first you wanna remove the stand. And this is how you remove the sand. I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek. So as you can see, there's like a little remove strip here. It says remove. So you wanna just hold on the GoPro tight because it might fall. You wanna twist this to loosen the base. After that, the base should just come off and you're left with your little case. Now to get off the case, I watched a video on this. Okay, I would have literally never figured this out because I would have been afraid to break the GoPro. But you have to take this tab and you literally have to pull super hard. Like, you think the plastic's gonna break hard. Oh, okay, sometimes it's hard to get, your, get a grip on those, but there you go. This will pop up and you'll see a little ring. Then on the back side, you can literally just lift this up and then, okay, I don't wanna drop the GoPro. The frame should just open. You can take off the GoPro and you have your GoPro. You can take off the GoPro, you can take out the GoPro and you have your GoPro. Now there's gonna be like a little adhesive thing so you can just peel that off and you're left with a shiny new GoPro. I don't know why I said that in a weird accent, but I did. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a little, a little tour of the GoPro, guys. Here we go. I'm gonna move my thing and I'm just gonna stay behind the tripod. On the front, you have your lens and you have a little recording light, I believe that is, because that's how it shows on the box. I think it just turns red when you're recording and you have obviously your GoPro logo. On this side, you have your SD card slot micro SD card slot and your charging port. The way you open this is you hold down on the button. You don't, you don't wait for anything, but you have to slide it down. And then that should release like a little suctioned off area. As you can see, there's like a little suction cup just to keep the water out. And you have your micro SD card slot on the right and your charging port on the left for the USB-C. So we're gonna close that back up and we're gonna add them later. For the screen, it's so just the screen and it says GoPro right here. I don't know if you guys can see. You have your power button, and I believe that is a microphone because on the bottom, you have your speakers. And on the top, you have your shutter slash record button. It depends if you're taking a photo or a video. Now, one thing to mention is that all GoPros, but this, I'm not sure about the white, but the blacks for sure, they have removable caps, which means if you like crack your lens, just like the, the this part of it, you can just remove it and replace it with another one. This one's all one piece, which is good and bad. It's bad if you break it, because then you have to like rebuild the whole thing, buy the whole thing again, or I don't know. Like it's gonna definitely cost more to fix. But in return, it's way lighter, it's cheaper, and it's easier to use, and it's also less risk of the cap being loose and the water getting into the camera. It's time to power it on by holding the power button that I previously stated. Oh, okay. Oh shoot, okay. It's asking me for like my location, my date and time. I don't know if it's gonna ask me that. But right now it's asking for like language and stuff. So I'm just gonna cut the camera, do all of the setup, and then come back when the camera's up and running. Okay guys, so I just finished setting it up. That was actually really easy. I also, in the meantime, connected my GoPro app to my phone so we could just have that. It just asked me to like pair my GoPro, you know, like classic Bluetooth Wi-Fi pairing. And my GoPro, it's also charged up to 100%, pretty cool. So right now from what I'm seeing, the fisheye looks crazy on this. Okay, so while setting it up, I learned a lot of cool things that this GoPro could do, so let me show you. On the bottom, right here, you automatically have four buttons. You have your 4K button, which if you click it, it records into 4K. You have your second button, which is a 15 second clip button. So if you click it, you'll record videos only for six, 15 seconds. Your third button is a slow-mo button. It records at two times slow-mo. And your last one is a zoom button. So if you click it, you'll have like a slider 
and you can zoom. But you guys may be saying that's it, that's all you're getting. Well, really no, there's actually a hidden menu. Well, I, I didn't know it existed until now. So if you just swipe down, you have your menu. And here, you have your voice commands that was advertised. You also have quick capture, which I have no idea what that does. But I'm just gonna, which I have no idea what it does, but it was on by default, so I'm just gonna leave it on. You have beeps, so you can turn off the beeps when your camera turns on and off, but I kind of like that, it's kind of satisfying. And you also have a screen lock, which is off, because I don't really, I mean, that's default, so I'm just gonna leave that at default. You may be wondering, can this, can this camera only take videos? Well, no, like I've stated, you can also take photos. This is how you switch. So, you may remember when I showed you that power button, but underneath it, it says mode, if you can see. So, if I click the power button while the camera is on, just for a quick second, it will switch the mode. Now it's the photo. And then if I click it again, now it's the time lapse. And one last time, now it's back to video. I really like that feature because it's just so quick and simple. You don't need to touch, like if you want, if you're in the water and you're taking a video and then your screen's wet, I don't know if your screen works underwater, then you want to switch to photo, you can just click the button instead of like, you know what I mean. It's, yeah, it's kind of a hassle. Okay, so before I do some test footage and show you guys how to do the SD card, I'm gonna show you the cool app. So I'm gonna come behind the camera again just to show you guys. Okay, so my phone currently is joining my GoPro. I had to turn on wireless connections on in the menu. And there you go. It's saying that I need a micro SD card and I don't have enough space because there's no micro SD card. I'm gonna do a quick cut and show you guys how to format your SD card. You can skip it because I'm pretty sure they're gonna need timestamps at below. So even if you have a new SD card, you're probably gonna format it just like me because this was brand new out of the box. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial on how to format your SD card. Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial on how to format your SD card. So just proceed with caution because this will delete whatever is on your SD card once you format it. So I plugged in my SD card and I searched up disk utility. Then you'll see on the left hand side my SD card's there, it's named GoPro. And after I click on that, you want to click erase at the top. Then you can rename your SD card to whatever you want. Now make sure you know what the size of it, your SD card is. If it's anywhere between 8 to 32 gigabytes, you want to format it to MSDOS FAT. And if it's anywhere from 64 gigabytes and up, you want to format it to EXFAT. So since I'm using a 64 gigabyte SD card, I'm formatting it to EXFAT. And after you click done and erase, boom, you're done. Okay, welcome back. So now that you know how to format your SD card, this is how you insert it. I mean, it's not that hard to insert it. Once again, you open this like I showed you before, and you're gonna insert this simply in that slot. Now, you're gonna push it, but it's gonna be like, it's gonna be coming back. It's not gonna click in like a regular SD card because this is just gonna push down and hold it into place as it locks. Um, by the way, you should usually turn off your camera when you put in an SD card, but I didn't, but it's fine, it still works. So as you can see now, instead of saying no SD, it shows the time I have of recording, which is really cool. Four hours and 17 minutes for a 64 gigabyte SD card. So let's go back to the GoPro app now that your SD card is in. So now my GoPro app is successful, got it. Control your GoPro, update. Accept and continue. Boom. My camera is updating. Okay, so my update is officially installing. So you guys can see that was really quick. It literally got to 100%. I believe so in like two minutes, three minutes. Oh, there is something happening on my GoPro. It says, as you can see, there is the light that I was talking about. Do not exit the GoPro app or turn off your camera during this process. What am I supposed to do? What is the light? Put the GoPro down? Is that what it means? I, I don't know. What was that? Okay, guys. The update literally just completed. It says update finished right there with the check mark. It says update finished and now it wants to join. This is really cool, guys. Watch this. Okay, guys, so as you can see, my phone is actually streaming what my GoPro sees. So my GoPro is on the table, as you can see down there. And if I pick it up right now, and I'm moving it around, as you can see. That's so cool. So watch this. So I can I can take a picture of my bed right there, or let's take a picture of my table high up, and I can just boom. Oh, it's taking a video. Okay, guys, this is my table. Now, what I'm wondering, will this save to my camera roll? It's actually saved on my GoPro app, and I'm pretty sure I can export it to my camera roll. 
That's even, that's cool. Okay, let's watch it. This is a low resolution preview, just so you guys know. Because this is, yeah, still on the app. Oh, it's taking a video. Okay, guys, this is my table. Boom. That's so cool. That just makes, that just makes the GoPro so much easier to use, I believe. So we have our GoPro completely set up and I showed you, and I showed you all the features it has, everything so cool about it. So now guys, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna unbox this grip really fast and then we're gonna test some footage out with the GoPro. So let's unbox the grip. Okay, I pre-cut it, let's go. Boom. And that's bigger than I thought, holy crap. I thought it was gonna be tiny. Okay, well, here's the grip, and just to give a comparison, here is the GoPro, so tiny. And the way you attach this is you use the mount that was given to you in the box, along with the stand, the universal stand, so it just works with all of the GoPro equipment, which is I find pretty cool. So let's at attach this GoPro on the stand. Hit the time-lapse mode, even though it's not gonna be that long. Come on, attach, boom, and it's attached. It's really cool. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna film some really cool B-roll and showcase all of the features. Why not? Let's do this. Okay guys, so welcome back. I just shot a couple of videos of just my setup as you probably saw with the GoPro. I also took a picture. We can start with the picture. This is the picture that the GoPro took. Now remember that the GoPro takes pictures raw in 1440, but obviously if you import it to iMovie, you can downscale it to 1080. That's what it means. So it's good just to have that extra, extra gap. If you record in 4K, this doesn't happen. It's, it's like regular 16 by nine ratio. Okay guys, this is how a regular video looks with the GoPro. I really enjoy the fish eye, like the fish eye is so cool. Okay, that was the video. Now we're gonna do 4K. This one probably looks the best. Even from a 1080p computer. This, the 1080p ones were a little bit grainy, especially when the camera would move, but this 4K is solid, it's solid. It's like perfect. It's sharp, it's everything. So I think I'm not even gonna use the, the regular video. I think I'm always gonna use 4K. Yeah, this is it. Yo, yo guys probably, I don't know, maybe YouTube compression won't make you see the difference, but there is a huge difference, huge. I'm kind of disappointed with the, I mean, it's 1080p, okay. I don't know, for me, I, just, I thought the 1080p was gonna look pretty good too, but unfortunately to get that really crisp, you need to use the 4K, which I'm not, I'm not complaining. Like. 4K 30 frames per second is still pretty good. 30 frames per second is cinematic quality, okay? I'm not really complaining. So I think that for sure, if you do buy the black and you do buy the silver and compare them, the silver is obviously gonna be worse in pretty much every department than the black. It doesn't even have the screen on the front, which... But I think that if you're looking for a budget GoPro, just a camera that can go underwater, record 4K, just like action camera in general, this is perfect. I think I'm gonna use this a lot this summer, hopefully. But I think I'm gonna use this a lot, maybe going underwater with it, recording cool slow-mo, especially using that 4K. That 4K capability is what surprised me the most. That's super crisp, super crisp. But yeah, the 1440p didn't really surprise me that much. That doesn't matter because this camera is 4K, so yeah. It, I think they just included that there to have a have an option for people that don't have that much storage on their SD card. So once again, do I recommend this camera? Absolutely, especially if you don't have enough money to buy the expensive GoPro Hero 7 Black or even the GoPro Hero 8 Black. I think that this is a good, cheaper alternative. I say cheaper because the cheapest is the white, but I've seen some reviews for the white and they don't say it's that great. You can't even record 4K. You only have the 1440p option. But if that's what you're looking for, then the white, go with the white by all means. But I think if you just want an action camera that can just record 4K, can go underwater, this is the perfect one for you. The Series 6 didn't have the Silver Series, the Series 5 didn't have the Silver Series. So the Series 7 is really good because it has the three tiers that you can choose from. Okay guys, so I hope you enjoyed my thoughts, my reviews, my unboxing, and my setup of this GoPro Hero 7 Silver along, forgot about this, with this cool floaty tripod. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe to this channel, and also turn on, hit that little bell so you get to turn on notifications so you never miss a video ever again. Once again, my Patreon will be down below in the description. Make sure to stay tuned for more videos to come.